Hi you guys, my name is Crystal, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is on endometriosis. Endometriosis is a inflammatory condition where endometrial-like tissue grows outside of the uterus. The endometriosis lesions are not exactly the same as your endometrial lining. So if you look at your uterus, your uterus has an endometrial lining and that lining grows and thickens during one menstrual cycle. And it also sheds when you have your period. Now with endometriosis, endometrial-like tissue, which is similar to the endometrial lining, actually grows outside of the uterus. So it can attach to ligaments in the abdomen cavity, it can attach to the uterus, the fallopian tubes, maybe even the ovaries. It can also attach to the colon. And these lesions kind of look like black dots almost, like they look like black scar tissue when you see them. And they respond to estrogen changes and estrogen fluctuations. So the thing that makes endometrial endometriosis really serious is that endometriosis lesions actually like grow and shed throughout one menstrual cycle because they are estrogen sensitive. So what happens is in one menstrual cycle your estrogen will fluctuate and it'll get really high during ovulation which will grow these lesions as well as your endometrial lining in your uterus and then when your estrogen goes low in your luteal phase that is when you have your period. You will shed your endometrial lining but these endometriosis lesions will then bleed because they are hormone sensitive so once estrogen drops really low they bleed just like they would if they were in your uterus and they were being shed during your period and that bleeding can cause a lot of symptoms there are four stages of endometriosis they are minimal mild moderate or severe and it depends on the location of the lesions as well as the size and the depth so there are different stages and depending on what stage you are you might have correlating symptoms or you might not there are some people out there that have severe endometriosis and might not have a lot of symptoms whereas on the flip side some people can have like a very mild or minimal endometriosis and they have crazy pain and that's because these lesions grow and bleed with your menstrual cycle I mean how could that not be painful and so it's really important that if you have any pain or you're experience any pain especially around your period or even at other times in your cycle, I really, really highly recommend seeing a gynecologist or someone who specializes in endometriosis because unfortunately, endometriosis is a very like lesser known condition, even though it's common, like 10% of menstruators have endometriosis, which means that you probably know someone with it or you might have it yourself, but a lot of doctors just don't really understand it that well. And so it's really great to be referred to a specialist if you can. And that's because endometriosis it can get worse like it can progressively get worse and it can get to the point where it will affect your fertility so what are the symptoms of endometriosis so the biggest symptom is pelvic pain and that can be while you have your period or it can be when you don't have your period it doesn't really matter although painful menstruation is a symptom of endometriosis pelvic pain is also a symptom and it can happen anytime and the other thing with that is painful sex so if you have sex and you're in pain like a few days after. It's not normal to experience pain when you have sex. Other things that can happen is when you do have your period, you might find it hard to go to the bathroom, so urinating or having a bowel movement, and that can be because endometriosis lesions might be on your bladder or on your colon, and that's just gonna be really painful. And another symptom would be heavy periods. So if you have like a really heavy flow, that is a symptom of a bigger problem. People with endometriosis may also experience experience GI problems or they might even have like IBS or another digestive issue. Endometriosis is often confused with IBS or pelvic inflammatory disease and so a lot of people find that they don't get a diagnosis of endometriosis for quite a while. A lot of other conditions can kind of present with pelvic pain. And so the best thing to do if you believe you are experiencing endometriosis is to talk to a gynecologist, see a specialist, and look into laparoscopic surgery. Now that is the gold standard of diagnosing endometriosis. Yes, you can have a pelvic exam done and you possibly can have like an ultrasound done, but those cannot 100% confirm if you have endometriosis. You have to do the laparoscopic surgery. When you do the surgery, that 
that means that the doctor or the specialist that's doing that, they can actually like visually see what's going on and then they can tell you what stage of endometriosis you have. And then they could possibly also do what is called an excision, which is when they actually will take out the endometriosis. There is no known cure, but there is a lot of things you can do to manage endometriosis. Now, when it comes to treatment, the thing that you will probably be offered if it is suspected or confirmed that you have endometriosis is birth control. So hormonal birth control can help endometriosis because it actually basically just flatlines your hormones and puts synthetic hormones in your body and that will cause the endometrial lesions not to grow or shed. So I know a lot of people have um, a lot of issues with birth control. I think birth control does have applications outside of like suppressing fertility. I mean, when we're talking about these topics, we have to be mindful that our personal experience is going to be different than someone else's. Prescription drugs are another treatment for endometriosis, like taking painkillers, taking progesterone. There are immune suppressing drugs that might be beneficial. And I always just want to be transparent with you guys and offer these treatment options because for some people, these will like greatly improve their quality of life. Now, of course, with that being said, those prescription drugs or like hormonal birth control, that kind of thing, those are just going to fix the symptoms of endometriosis. They're not actually going to fix the problem. And that is because there is no known cure for endometriosis at this time. Hopefully one day down the road there will be, but at this time management really just depends on how severe the endometriosis is. Now a few other things that can really help that are more like holistic would be stress management. Stress management helps every condition possible. And then if you are someone that wants to use foods as medicine, turmeric and ginger are great pain relievers. If your pain is super severe, they might not touch it, but they are anti-inflammatories. And if you have them every day, they can help with inflammation and endometriosis is an inflammatory condition. So they could offer a little bit of benefit. And with that being said, foods high in omega-3s can be helpful because omega-3s are also anti-inflammatory and foods high in phytoestrogens. So phytoestrogens reduce estrogen load. We are inundated with estrogen every single day, like xenoestrogens, which come from our environment and plastics and pollutants and like the food we eat, you know, they're in pesticides and all this kind of stuff. And then there's also going to be the estrogens that are found in meat and dairy. So if you have endometriosis, get meat and dairy out of your life and looking towards shifting to a high fiber, whole food plant-based diet. And that is because taking exogenous hormones out of your body that you will find in meat and dairy will greatly reduce your estrogen load. And so it's really important because endometriosis is like estrogen dependent and a whole food plant-based diet You're still gonna have fluctuating estrogen. It's going to support healthy estrogen though And it's not going to add this like burden of estrogen into your system And so I really really highly recommend you looking into that and then of course I think it's really important to include things like yoga and deep breathing and meditation Which can also just bring a sense of calm and a sense of connection to yourself when I was putting this video together I wanted to do as best a job as I could and so I did reach out to a friend of mine who has endometriosis and I asked her what is something that you wish you knew before your diagnosis and she gave me some really really great insight and she said first of all to see a specialist because not a lot of doctors are very knowledgeable about endometriosis and so she did end up finding a practitioner she is working with that is offering her more of a holistic treatment plan that is working with her to support her body as best as she can and she did say that the most beneficial thing she's done for her endometriosis was to acknowledge it but then to also let the label go and to pursue more of a spiritual connection to herself to facilitate this healing and she just wanted me to make sure that I was aware that for her having this like awakening where she got her diagnosis but Instead of claiming that as her identity, she said, you know what, that's part of me, that's fine, it is what it is, but I'm so much more than this diagnosis, and this diagnosis does not run my life, and endometriosis is not who I am. And I thought that was really, really powerful and really, really beautiful, because that plays into the psycho-spiritual aspect of healing. You know, we all carry so much trauma, and so I just 
really really appreciated that she said that because it gave me another aspect to include in these videos that I make to make sure that if you guys are struggling with any period issue it is so important to connect to yourself and take a deep dive into healing you and kind of to let go of making this diagnosis your reality and your identity it's just something that is happening and you'll get through it and it will be okay. And so I just wanted to put that out there because I think that is a really important tenet of healing that is often overlooked. Now, the last thing that can be really helpful for endometriosis is doing acupuncture. And so acupuncture is a form of traditional Chinese medicine. I myself have experience with acupuncture and it's amazing. And so I would love to like just offer that um, as something that might help you as well. Same with going down a more like alternative route and looking into more of like a naturopathic point of view because naturopaths can support your diet and lifestyle and offer supplements because there are some herbal supplements that can also be beneficial with helping with hormone support and just making sure that you are metabolizing and getting rid of any excess estrogen so your body isn't like overloaded with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it is really helpful. If you have anything to add please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and as always your cycle matters so much and I am here for you. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!